So in the video, you see that Cannon Trench performs a unblockable windmill. And as the opponent decides to get up, and as soon as the windmill is almost finished, he gets hit by the windmill unblockable, and then giving Trench enough time to go for down 2-2-2 two, two, two for a bound. Now, trying to replicate this in the training mode is hard to really do. And I started to think to myself, what if there's a way to perform the tech from other variations of, of wake up attempts from the opponent, not simply just from waiting whether or not if they will get up from the ground at the particular time that the windmill is about to finish. So this is what I basically found out when playing Yoshimitsu and discovering the tech, I guess you can say, the way how it's performed. Because there is one way to do it and it's very easy to do actually, but it's not exactly something you can do at all given times because of the specific way that the opponent has to get up from the ground. For example, As you can see, when you perform this particular type of tech with the unblockable sword windmill, you can actually get a pickup from the windmill if you manage to cancel it quickly enough, and you gotta be close enough to the opponent to do so, and perform back 2 into your Kensho stance into back 2 1 for the bound, you can perform this particular tech. Now, this tech isn't exactly new, as there's already been a couple of creators that already posted out this kind of content before, and other Yoshimitsu specialist players that already have posted this particular type of tech online already as is. Now, I don't know about any other tech besides this one, but if this is not new, then I may, I'm not going to act like I have, but I'm gonna, going to say that maybe I have founded a new type of way to perform the tech from the wall, besides just simply just going for Samurai Cutter, your Poison Breath, instead. So, okay, so for one, you have to be towards the wall. And depending on how you manage to get the opponent towards the wall or how exactly you interact with the opponent once you try to wall splat them, you can actually get this to work no matter what, as long as they do exactly as is intended from the opponent's side. Now as you saw the particular way how I did it, it doesn't really matter how I got the hits off the opponent, it's just a way to deal some damage and then as they slump back down, if they decide to go for a side roll, not a side okeme, and it's to the left or to the right, does not matter, they will get hit by the windmill, and as the windmill finishes, you can actually land your down 2 2, two. or if it manages to hit them and re wall splat them, which can happen, you can go for down 2-2-2 two, 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 or your kangaroo kick instead to bound the opponent. You can do the same thing doing it this way as well. It doesn't really matter as long as you manage to bound the enemy and even if you don't bound them from a tornado I mean. You can just wait until they slump down enough and get the right timing as once they are trying to like side roll to either side you can then perform the windmill and then if you manage to do it at the exact time then you can land the last bit of the attacks animation to then go for the down 2-2-2 two, two, two. it's guaranteed no matter what now the issue is is that there are moments in the structure of the route that you may not get it right and instead you just may hit them while they're trying to perform a side roll. As you see. So you might just end up hitting them before you even manage to even allow them access or time to then roll away for the windmill to then finish its, you know, phase to then attack the opponent. Now you may be wondering, can you do it from other ways of off of the opponent's grounded tech. For one, you can do a different variation which allows you to do the windmill but you have to cancel it quickly from either a mid kick or a low kick if they decide to do that. In this case, I didn't get the bound but it does work. It just really depends on the particular timing and exactly the hitbox variation 
when landing your down 2 2 2 to get the bound. So you can see it works. As long as you perform a sidestep to your right if you're playing on the player one side, and or player two side, it doesn't really matter as long as it's towards the wall. But if you know where which side you're trying to sidestep from, it works from that side. So essentially, sidestep to your right, then you press forward into a jab. Because if you only do a sidestep right into a one, you're getting this instead. And from there, once you get that hit off of the jab one, you backstep long enough like a long back step and then go into your windmill and you try to cancel it as quickly as possible as well so that you can then manage to get the brian or any other character specifically to then get up from a mid kick or a low kick and land the unblockable windmill in time to where they'll get resplatted or they'll be hit off of the air in two hits to land the down two 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 bound here's a different way of performing it by using the forward three, forward four, like basically moves that can resplat, but allows them to then slump back down to the ground, or should I say more like they're gonna be falling forwards onto the ground. This one's a little trickier because you have to wait until you manage to step enough away from the opponent and then landing your sidestep one or should i say delaying the the one to land because it still has enough time to where the game still considers you to be sidestepping and then you go into the one and then you realign yourself with a sidestep to your left into the one uh, pressing forward into the one i should say and then backstep again into your unblockable windmill to get the resplat Again, this works for both mid kick and low kick options from the opponent, so as long as they're doing those two options, you can hit them. But again, this also means it depends on whether or not if they'll do it quickly off of the ground. So if they do it and they wait a little bit, then chances are you may not even land the windmill and they may just wait until later on. And one other thing is that this doesn't work against opponents that go for toe stabs or for spring kicks either. As you can see, the variation of what might happen in doing this route is that either one, you'll still hit them while they're trying to go for toe stab, or two, they make it up just accurately enough to where they'll get re-splatted, but they'll slump down very quickly, so you won't even have enough time to do the down 2-2-2, two, 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 or you'll just get hit by the toe stab. From my experimentation, that's what's going to happen when doing this particular variation of the setup, but they go for toe stab instead to beat out your windmill. Same thing with Spring Kick, either it may hit the opponent and you won't have to worry about getting hit by Spring Kick, other times it might just be that you'll get hit by Spring Kick, or they may just get hit while they're trying to get up from the ground and not get the splat anyways. So either variation, chances are you won't even land the particular setup against the opponent because of the animation and hitbox of the Spring Kick. This particular variation happens when if the opponent decides to go for a back roll instead from grounded. Not a quick back roll, but just a regular back roll. So if they decide to do this, you can try it in working out by doing the windmill variation like I just mentioned, the quick version by canceling it. Or you can try going for the bound and then try going for the method of doing this, but you might be too close to the opponent where you may not even get the perfect Goldilocks zone, if you will that can land the windmill in time, but also canceling out quickly enough to where you can actually get the splat into the down 2-2-2 two, two, two bound. Now, what if you're doing it from a combo? If you're going for a combo, and let's say they get splatted to the wall, you can try doing these variations of setups to then try to land the particular unblockable windmill to getting the re-splat into the combo. So you can see you can also do it this way. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice and as you see, when I went for the jab, I whipped on purpose. You can also try to land the hit as well if you want to, but 
whiffing it to then or not should i say not more time but it may give the impression from the opponent that oh you whipped your chances of attacking me maybe i'll immediately go for a side roll or a side okeme and then try to attack you right afterwards but as you see i made it so that the opponent decides to go for a side roll only they may actually get hit by the windmill afterwards because they're thinking that oh i have enough time to get away This one also can work, but if they're already seeing that you're going to go for the windmill, there's a huge chance that you're going to stay down, or they may not even attempt to go for a side roll anyways, but if it chances are, you know, if let's say the opponent decides to side roll, or into a mid kick, then you can land this one as well against the opponent. You don't have to attack them, you just have to basically bait them into thinking that why are you trying to sidestep and then go into the windmill and from there if they immediately go for a mid kick or a low kick there's a huge chance that you may manage to get a immediate rebound against the opponent into the wall splat to then get into the down 222 tornado And as you can see, it also works with the low kick. And here you can also do it this way as well, where if the opponent decides to, again, uh, you can go for a different route and they go for the same low kick or mid kick options you can perform the setup as well this way. So as long as you perform any combo and it splats them, you can then perform the initial setup against them this way. But it only seems to work if you do it this way. Now there's a chance that depending on the character size that it may not work or it may work. For example, if it's the bears, it does not work. I have done the tests, it doesn't work against the bears. If you do it against Jack, it kind of works against Jack because of his weird hitbox, because even though he's also pretty big, like the bears, he doesn't have the same problems that the bear has with their, you know, lower hitbox from their legs. So there's a chance that you may still manage to make it work with Jack, but there's a very low accuracy with him. And then with smaller characters, I think the success rate with the smaller characters are even higher than mid-sized characters like Brian or taller characters like, let's say, Victor it will still work against them, but it's still a lower chance. The bigger the, the body or the taller the body, the higher the chances of it failing. But with the character being either slightly smaller or at the same size as Yoshimitsu, then the combo setup can actually work if you perform the unblockable windmill setup. Now, even with that being said, you don't have to go for this particular type of unblockable setup, but it is there if you want to choose to go for something flashy or to attempt to go for more bigger damage. With this route, you can kind of do the same thing on towards the wall without doing the combo with the no source hands version of the unblockable windmill, or I call it the finger windmill. Now, the finger windmill has a lot of cons in the fact that you can't really do this setup with the finger windmill if they decide to do anything else besides a wake up mid kick. If they decide to go for a wake up mid kick, it will work. And you have to cancel out the, the finger windmill fast enough so that you can then land it and then get enough time to then perform your down 222. And in other cases, there is a way to do it with the longer version of the finger windmill, but it's very specific to what the opponent may do to you, like for example, like this. You can do it this way, but it is very difficult to actually have enough particular time to then perform the bound right afterwards and even if you try to cancel it out quickly enough you still don't have the time to really perform the down 222 anyways so really when doing a combo route it's harder to land the longer variation of the finger windmill it's only when you're nor towards the wall that you can try then perform the finger windmill from a setup and even then it's still very uh, questionable as to how exactly it would even work against the opponent so don't really use this unless you're for sure that they're gonna go for either a mid kick.
So if you want to perform the setup in a match, you can. Just that you have to be very sure what the opponent is going to do next. So if you guys like the video, give it a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe and see more of my shit, hit the notification bells because that helps me a lot. YouTube's algorithm can be a bitch sometimes. And yeah, stay safe, stay tuned.